For today's EM and 5, we're going to talk about thyroid storm. This is an endocrine emergency. It happens in women a lot more often than men. It's about 10 to 1, and it has a high mortality, especially because we can miss it up to 10 to 30 percent. So who are we looking for this in? It's patients who already have a history, some Graves' disease, adenoma, goiters. They might be taking exogenous medications or be on lithium amiodarone or maybe have autoimmune disease. And overall, the people that are high risk are those that are untreated for hyperthyroidism, undiagnosed or non-compliant with their medications. Then in addition, we have to add a stressor. So whether that's physiological, emotional, maybe they had recent surgery, they were pregnant, maybe they're currently having an infection, MI, stroke, or even a psychiatric episode. These are all things that convert them from hyperthyroidism into thyroid storm. And other than that, we don't have a really good idea of what causes some people to be hyperthyroid and some people to have thy thyroid storm. But we do know, like I said, untreated, undiagnosed, add a stressor to that, those are the people who are at risk and we should be looking for this in. Now the symptoms are basically a sympathetic overdrive. The patients will tell you that they've been having palpitations, they're febrile, sweaty, really agitated, or nervous, tremulous, and maybe they've been having some abdominal symptoms recently or even weight loss. When they come into the ER, they're going to be tachycardic, have a really high blood pressure with wide pulse pressures, so really bounding pulses. They might have a high fever, be agitated, and on the far end of the spectrum, might even be confused, delirious, or in a coma. One other thing to mention here is they might have a high output heart failure. Look for that, especially if the patients have been tachycardic for a long period of time. Again, look out for flushed, diaphoretic, and then any symptoms of Graves' disease that might tip you off that this is a patient at high risk. Now, if you do send labs, you'll have a low to undetectable TSH and a really high free T4. But let me stress here that this is a clinical diagnosis. The idea is that there just isn't time to wait for labs to come back to prove that you're right. There's a couple of clinical predictive scales that can help push you in one direction or the other. But basically, this is the kind of thing that if a patient comes in who you're thinking maybe has sepsis, ask yourself, why don't they also have the thyroid storm? So it's a high clinical suspicion. Remember that it might be both. These patients need a stressor a lot of times to flip them over into thyroid storm. So they might be septic and have thyroid storm. And really try to avoid premature closure and cling to a diagnosis that you started with. So here's the pathway. We have the hypothalamus that makes thyrotropin releasing hormone, which goes to the pituitary, which releases thyroid stimulating hormone, which goes to the thyroid that makes T4 converts peripherally into T3 and goes to the tissues to activate. So for treatment, we have three goals of things that we need to block in this pathway. First, we need to block the production and release of the hormone. We need to block the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. And we need to block the sympathetics peripherally that are going crazy with this high thyroid hormone. Lastly, we need to address that precipitating event. Here's the four medications you're going to use to block these pathways. And we'll go through each of those, but let me also add, we need to do supportive care. So for hyperkinesis, you can use benzo. They might benefit from cooling blankets if they're hyperthermic, and they might need a lot of fluid resuscitation unless they're in that high output heart failure. One quick note is that they have fevers, you should treat with Tylenol, not aspirin, because that can actually exacerbate it. So let's go through each of these four drugs. First, we have the thionamide, and they act by these first two things. They block the production and release, and they block the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. So here are your choices. You have PTU, propothiouracil, and methimazole. PTU is probably your first choice because it's safe in pregnancy, but it does have a black box warning for hepatotoxicity, so make sure and check your LFTs. One thing you note is both of these are given PO, which can be tricky if your patient is in a coma or very lethargic or delirious, so you might have to get creative. They might need to be given through an NG tube or even rectally. Next, we have iodine, and one big thing to note here is you have to give it one hour after the thionamide, so after your PTU. That's because iodine is actually a substrate in the production of the thyroid hormones, the T4 and T3. And so if you give it before you've blocked the production with your PTU, it's actually going to make the problem worse and you'll end up with more thyroid hormone. The way that iodine acts is to block the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3. These are your choices. You have the saturated solution of potassium iodide or Lugo solution. This is actually kind of an interesting dosing. It comes in drops, and you actually add the drops to some juice or milk and have the patient drink it. Again, you might have to get creative if they're comatose. If they have an iodine allergy, as many of our patients do, you might have to think about giving lithium carbonate as your alternative. Next, we have the beta blockers, and this blocks the sympathetics and the beta adrenergic receptors peripherally. Your choices are probably either propranolol is a great choice to start with, or you can do esmolol. For patients that can't tolerate beta blockers, you have these two as a backup, but they do both cause hypotension, so be aware of that. 
Lastly, we have the steroids. This also blocks the peripheral conversion of T4 to T3 and in addition boosts the hypothalamic pituitary axis. Your good choice is probably to start with our hydrocortisone or decadron. Now lastly, we need to address that precipitating event. So almost all patients with thyroid storm, you should probably be starting antibiotics on just in case. You need to culture them, make sure you get an EKG, and they're probably headed to the ICU with endocrine on consult. So three things to remember for thyroid storm. This is a clinical diagnosis. You have to have high suspicion for a patient that's tachycardic, diaphoretic, agitated, febrile, and you can't wait necessarily for those labs to come back. Also, make sure you avoid premature closure and just say, this is sepsis, I'm done. Think about thyroid storm because they might have both. For treatment, these are your four drugs that you need to get. The PTU, iodine, propranolol, and steroids. And make sure you give the iodine one hour after the PTU. Here's the resources and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.